Hello and welcome to Tykes TV. Uh, Ryan the Bearded Tyke. Uh, yeah. Appreciate you taking your time out, mate. Uh, you're not as busy and that. Uh, big game coming up. We've got, you know, a small matter of Derby County coming up on Saturday. So I think everybody's excited for that. Uh, just going to read out a short statement um, from Tracy Baker. As people may or may not know on social media is about Richard Atkinson. So she's given me permission to read this out. Um, so I'm going to read it out and then put it all out there for everybody. So this is from Tracy Baker. Uh, it was with a very heavy heart that I write this post. During the early hours of Sunday morning, my brother-in-law, Richard Atkinson, was taken from his wife, Mandy Atkinson, and family unexpectedly. He was a rest supporter through and through, travelling up and down the country to watch his beloved Bounds FC with East Dean Reds. At Masking, everyone who goes to the game at Oakwell on Saturday to join in in a minute support so on the 64th minute when we take on Derby to celebrate this very unique individual's life. RIP Richard, you will be missed by everyone who knew you. Please share with other supporters groups, make this happen. The family are asking everybody not to share this post onto anyone's personal Facebook page, but please respect them, thank you. So again, um, I've got permission from Tracy to put my heart on channels. I know other content creators have and on social medias and yeah. stuff like that with their blessings. So again, Ryan, it, it kind of puts football in perspective. I mean, once red, always red. We always say that. Um, 64 year old, you know, loves football, passion, like what has as is his passion, but it, it, just sh shocking sad news, mate, isn't it? Yeah, it's I mean it's really sad, isn't it? I, I, I didn't I didn't know Richard, but we were just talking off air. I, I, I do recognise his face from football, you know, going to away mm. games and seeing him. So when it when it popped up, I, I recognise him from seeing it, seeing him at games, although I've never I've never actually met him, but he's it's really sad, mate. It's it's just really sad. Um, you know, I think like with any a, a, any death in a family is really sad, but when it's so sudden and it's just it just happens so quickly and unexpectedly, it just I think it just makes it that mm. bit worse as well. Yeah. So you know, it, you know, my heart goes out to 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 his family, and I think it's the very least we can do as fans is to is to is to give him a you know a round of applause in sixty fourth minute. Yeah. Um... And again, if there's any Derby County supporters watching this, um, you know, that'll be the reason why. Please feel free. You know, obviously, yeah. you didn't know him, but I think football is, is one. We all kind of appreciate uh, the, the football community. Um, but again, it's going to be a packed house at Oakwell. So, I, you know, I, I should imagine it's going to be a great ovation for uh, Richard. I hope so, yeah. Uh, we'll, 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 get it, we'll get it going. Everyone will get it. Once, once somebody gets it going, you get it going again, don't you? And it's, you yeah. get it, everyone gets it going. So, like I say, it's very least we can do. Obviously, Richard dedicated a lot of his life to to following the Reds up and down the country. <laughs> um, it, 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 like I say, it's the very least we can do. And massive condolences to his family. Yeah, hopefully, we... Cool. Uh, Hopefully, hopefully the Reds can go and get a win, um, you know, in in his memory. Yeah, I call that. Um, Richard Atkinson, once red, always red. So, um, Derby County, Ryan, uh, we just took yeah. it there. It's going to be packed out. Oh, well, the uh, tickets are going pretty well. What I mean, what can you say about this? one being said, it's a massive, massive game. And I think for both sides, really, in different respects, we're... Derby were in second spot, uh, 1666. We're on uh, fourth on 60. Could you see this is a game similar to the one to like the Ipswich game last season where uh, yeah. this we need to get a result, otherwise that gap just gets a bit more uh, bigger, uh, Ryan? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's a bit earlier in season than the Ipswich game, wasn't it? Ipswich yeah. game was towards back end and it, and it just it just sort of squashed that any chances we had uh, of, of, of getting automatic promotion, although I don't think we would have done anyway. Um, last season, but um, it's a bit earlier on this season, so it's not. I wouldn't say it's season defining if we lose. Mm. Um, I'm op obviously hoping that we don't, but it's certainly it's certainly a big dent in the. Um, uh, I go as far as to say it's a massive dent in 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 our, you know, in our chances to get automatic promotion because that put Derby nine points clear of us um, with only a game in hand, you know, and they're, they're playing really well. Derby are where they should be. You know, I think it's fair to say, I think Derby fans will probably agree, they massively underachieved last season, not even finishing in the playoffs. A, a club of Derby's size should be top end of the championship, even, even in Premier League, a club that, you know, the facilities that they have and the 
and the club, you know, the fan base that they have. So I think, you know, Derby are where they should be. Um, so, and the, you know, they've got a really good side. They, they recruited really well in January as well, didn't they? Mm-hmm. They recruited really well in January. So um, I'm looking forward to it, mate. It's, you know, these are the games where I love going to every bounty game, mate, but these are the games that, that build, you know, that build up to it and, not only just because Derby have got such a great away fa- away following, and they always fill the away end. Yeah, yeah, you know, it's first team this season to fill the away end. Um, we had a few last season with Wednesday and Ipswich and Bolton coming down, but Bolton have not been to to, to Oakwell just yet this season. Um, so it's the first team that's going to really ca- you know pack that pack that away end out. And it, you know yourself, it makes a massive difference to the atmosphere, doesn't it? It makes a yeah, massive yeah. difference, and also alongside that. It's a massive game for both clubs. Uh, probably a bit bigger for us than it is for Derby because Derby have got that, you know, they've earned that little cushion that they've got, if you like. Mm-hmm. Um, but also, Bolton are right on their tails <laughs> with yeah. the game, games in hand. Bolton <laughs> are winning, you know, Bolton have had another good comeback win uh, during the week where they've gone 1-0 down and they've done what really good teams do, which is uh, they're pushing for promotion, which is get themselves back into it. So it's it's going to be a really interesting running. So it, it is a, it's a massive game for both teams, mate. And and the fact that it's going to be a packed out Oakwell, it just adds to the to the to the spice. And I just I just can't wait. These are the games that we go all seasons for, and then eventually just the the timing's right, and the, the amount of fans that are turning up are right, and it just adds to that to the whole occasion, if you like. So buzzing, mate. Can't wait. Yeah, I mean, I love it when touches like you said, Derby. You. You know your Boltons, like last season. You know, packed out. It makes a difference, and it makes a better atmosphere as well. Within you know, because you get back banter. No disrespect when you know you get your other teams coming up, and the a couple of hundred. It's it's hard to get the banter and the rivalry going, but when it's when you see it away and it's packed out, it's a better buzz, it's a better atmosphere, and I yeah. think. It makes for night, uh, makes for the game, regardless if it's been night or afternoon, even better, you know. And it's like I think to it to up our game as as players is in like I won't say a cauldron, but it's like more intense. If there's a better atmosphere there, oh, yeah. we as fans appreciate that as well. And surely we that transcends onto the pitch with players, and they, they want to up it for fans. And you've got to, you've got to well as well. That, to be fair. Yeah. yeah, you've got to think that Neil. You've got to think that the fans are going to be uh, sorry. The players are going to be absolutely buzzing about this Saturday. Mm. You know, we've not we've not had them. We've not. It's not. It's not been empty as well, but it's been. It's not been as full as it could have been. It's certainly not been as up to this point. It's not been as many fans as there was sort of last season. I won't mm. say. I might be wrong with the averages. I'm not. I'm, I'm not sure. But it, it just appears a bit that way. Yeah. Um, maybe it's because we haven't had as many. There's not as many big teams in the division this season, so there's not been as many non-season ticket holding fans turning up to these to these bigger games, if you like. Mm. Um, but as players, you've got to imagine these are the games that we're playing. You know what I mean? These are the games that they they, they put all the effort in throughout the season to get to these big games, to get to these big games where. There's a lot on the line. It's going to be packed. Atmosphere is going to be raucous. I wouldn't say it's a local derby, but it's you know we're not, we're not it too feels far. Feels like it to be fair, though. Yeah, it is a bit of a derby. You know, it's a bit of a derby it because it, like you know it. it's Yorkshire, it's Yorkshire against Derbyshire, and yeah. there's a whole coal mining thing that went on in the in the eighties. There's that there's that sort of thing there, and so it's going to be exciting, mate. It's going to be really exciting, and I, and, and I'm really looking forward to it. And I think you know I'd be probably getting too far in front here, but championship. If we were to get in there, whether it be playoffs or automatic, yeah. you know, because you're looking at the table with points wise. But <clears> when you're in <throat> championship, no respect, you've got bigger teams in there. And, yeah. and I, I, I like the I'm trying to word it where it's like not disrespectful to League One, but you you go in the championship, there is bigger clubs in there. They've come down for premiership, they've got uh, you know bigger fa- fan base followings and that. And I think that's what us as fans you 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 can get back like more yeah. raucous sort of atmosphere and you can get behind lads and it's a bit harder when there's like a, a smaller way following. And it's like, mm. yeah, I mean, we've I seen it when bands go away. Great following support we take away. And I think we make that atmosphere, if you know what I mean, with bands yeah. going away. Absolutely. you, you got to think, it, it, sometimes you look at that away end and you think, is it too big? Did they make it too big? Mm. But it's not. It's only too big for League One. Because if mm. you look at Championship, how many teams come and either fill it or nearly fill it? 
Yeah. You know, it passed. You usually Derby a championship team. So you're looking at your teams like Derby, one or if not both the Sheffield or Sheffield team. So United and Wednesday. Leeds, if Leeds are in the championship, they'll fill it. Leicester will fill it. Middlesbrough will fill it. Sunderland, Sunderland will fill it. Yeah. You know, Birmingham always bring a really good following. You know, all these teams that are in there, that then that that's when the away end obviously makes sense. And it were always so, built, it were built for that, weren't it? After we come out of the Premier League, it were built for that because yeah. our away end when we were in Prem weren't that big and it were always full. And the idea was that we were going to get back in the Prem. We've not achieved it since, but you know, but then it makes that away and then makes sense, doesn't it? It's just in League yeah, One, obviously, yeah. the size of the clubs that are in, you know, the, the size of the clubs that are in League One, the vast majority of them just don't have an overall following, never mind that kind of away following as well. Um, mm. So obviously it, it, the numbers dwindle a bit, but, um, and, and for me, that's one of the worst things about being in League One is, is, is the away following is never that, it's never that big, is it? And it doesn't, mm. it doesn't lend itself for that, for that, for that atmosphere, where is it? Ch- I said, I said last season when it will, when we were in League One, sometimes the atmosphere were better in the Championship when we were struggling than when we were in League One doing well. And I think a lot of that is to do with what you mentioned earlier. Neil, is about the away following, yeah, the size of the away following and the size of the games and the size of the teams that you play in. It, it just adds that bit of spice. And like this weekend coming up with Derby being, you know, arguably the biggest club in the league, would you say them and Bolton? I think Ben Bolton. Bolton. I think Bolton have obviously yeah. spent a lot more time in Premier League, so you could probably argue Bolton had, a, had been in Europe, haven't they, in recent, mm. in, in, in last in last 20 years or so. But maybe, but it's definitely between sort of them two. So it adds that extra spice, doesn't it, to the to, to the game. And obviously with, with so much being on it as well, it's like a double whammy. So, yeah. yeah that's true. Double whammy. Uh, so like we say, you know, big game up against Dar- Derby and each and we own respect Derby will see this is a big game. Is in the way for the automatic um, spotlight. You said via Bolton on the tails. Then it's us, Oxford, Peterborough, Stephen is maybe Blackpool, you know. Uh, so it's like it's getting to like an end of stage at season. Um, going into the game, though, Ryan, I don't think there's any pressure concerns, is there, going into this? Uh, no. Great to see Pines come on to make his debut yeah. away as a sub. And we kind of touched on that last, uh, uh, in the last yeah. preview. Changing back three, but McCart came in, but willing to go out right wing back. So kind of, kind of got it somewhat right, kind of thing against Fleetwood. But could you see Pines making his debut, or do you think? Do you know what? I hope so, mate. I hope yeah? so. Right, yeah. I thought I thought McCart, I thought McCart looked all right, but when Pines come on, he looked a lot more assured, mate. Okay. Yeah. He looked a lot more assured. I think I think him having him as a centre back, you know, you know, I think something. The I, I haven't seen enough of him with it with with the ball at his feet yet to see mm. see how much of a ball player centre back he is. A lot. I, I read a, a quite a bit from DC United fans saying he's not the best with the ball at his feet, but what he is is a unit. He's strong. He's very strong in the air. He'll get up and win them. Added and sometimes you need that. You need you know that good old fashioned centre back. You know your old Tony Adams and your Martin Keown, yeah, them yeah. kind of big horrible. Shit house, really. You know what I mean? That kind yeah, of yeah. big, horrible centre back that will bully, bully attackers and stuff like that. So techno I think, prisoners. Techno prisoners. For me, he's got to start because I, I think McCart looked a bit shaky at the weekend. Um, I'm not sure why he got put in at, at middle at back three and why he didn't keep the Gibney there because the Gibney's played so well at middle of that back three. I think Earl's more favoured on his left left foot. Um, yeah, but Earl's definitely on left foot. So when they put McCart in, I thought, well, they must be putting him on right. And he didn't. He put mm. the give me out to right and put McCart in at centre back, didn't it? At mm. centre of the of the back three. And I think I think I'm sure there's a reason for it, but I didn't particularly get that because you know the Gibney's played there all season, pretty well since he's been getting into the team. He's been playing at centre at back three, and he's bossed it, mate. Um, you know, he has well, yeah. he's, he's, he's shone really well. So for me, I'd be. Putting him there and putting Pines at right centre back, and obviously the the the, the, the move to really William Williams at right wing back as well just made a massive difference to Williams' performance. I thought he played really really well last Saturday. Yeah, I was gonna I was gonna touch on that because I think we're all kind of calling out for it, and yeah, it might change it back three. I was wondering where we McCart were going to play. If I'm being honest, I didn't know yeah. if we're going to be on left or in the middle. I won't right sure. I couldn't have seen the left footer going out on right centre back because I think they just might like, made it even more awkward. So maybe yeah. the given the going be might have been better, better or less to evils kind of thing. But I think, and I was just going to say to you, what we take on Jordan Williams because I thought he looked the player that we know he can play. He looked in okay. the he right position in the field. Yeah, yeah. Where Jordan's good, using his pace, getting out wide, stretching, stretching their, stretching their defence, 
Mm. It's what he's good at. Is his position. It's the position he's always played. And like I said, he's been get, he gets a lot of flack online, but he's been asked to play in a position which is not his normal position. And I think a bit of unf unfair. He's made some. He's made some a few errors, but I think you know he, he has done a job for the team, and and that's got to be you know that's got to be respected because he's done a, he's done a job for the team as asked by asked by his manager, mm. and he's done it for the majority of the season so far. Um, and. You know, it's obviously not his natural position. He's not a very big. He's not. You know, he's quite a slight lad, isn't he? But that's that. But that then, when he's on, when he's in his actual position, is a massive advantage to him because he's got so much pace. Yeah, yeah. I think yeah. I remember last season. Well, I think when we loaned him out before he went to Northampton, and I'm not very sure if it was Radio Sheffield or was, or it might be I follow. Well, I asking about who was quickest, and you know, I would like who was quickest at club and who was best dressed and mm -hmm. other, and. A, a majority of players were saying quickest at club were far well Jordan Williams with sprints over short distance and they were oh, like, lightning, we'll he's that. lightning yeah, yeah. yeah. the give me's fast as well isn't he the give me gets fast back yeah. fast yeah um, but yeah J J he's fast he's Jordan like he's, 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 he is weak like so um, I mean that, uh, Darby I'm looking at like table here with, with, but I mean Darby we'll talk about Darby a bit like now I mean they've just recruited uh, Marcus Gale I believe uh, Dwight Gale. Yeah, Dwight Gale. Sorry, Marcus yeah. Gale. Dwight Gale. Gale. Dwight. <laughs> All of it. Shop. Uh, yeah, Dwight Gale. Again, a lot of people like saying, "Oh, he could cause us trouble." Miss Over. I'm thinking, mm, I don't think he'd be going straight into the side straight. I away. don't think he'd be going straight in, mate. You've got to imagine. I think. I think there'd be some upset uh, derby players first at first mm -hmm. eleven if they just brought brought Dwight Gale in and stuck him in first eleven. Mm -hmm. You think, hang on a minute, is it just turned up at club and he just gets straight in? You know, what I mean, I think. I think you'd. I think he'd ruffle a few feathers. And yeah, I don't think he's played much, so I don't think he's going to be absolutely match fit. So if, no. if I were... Uh, it's Paul Warren, isn't it? The, is it Paul Warren, manager yeah. of doubt? Yeah. If, if I were Paul Warren, I'd be thinking that might be a bit of a risk in such a big game. Um, it'd probably be coming on as a sub at best. But I don't think it... I don't, personally, I don't think he'd be match fit. But, hmm. you know, if they've got him at the end of the season and they're probably paying him... Should we say extortionate wages? <laughs> yeah, I think it's a good addition for Derby. There, you know, it's probably only Derby that uh, that could afford his wages in this league, and it's only about end of season. So they're going to want, they are going to want to use him. Obviously, they're paying him a lot of money, but whether he'll come think, into first eleven or not, I want, I want to imagine. If you think the the front line that Derby have got, I don't think they need him to come straight in. I think it's a good addition to add to to add to ranks for that stage of the season, just to come on as a, even as an impact yeah. sub. You know, and Nick odd goal here and be you never know because he's he's been be you know he's he's been a bar he's it, yeah. yeah he's done you know, it so it's like he's like, done it in ESL, hasn't he? So yeah, why not why not? Just thought like last few games remaining, you know, he could come off the bench and make a difference. So remember remember him scoring a couple against us uh, when he were at Newcastle at Newcastle, Newcastle. Right championship. I think he scored both, didn't he? Yeah, I yeah. think the beat is two yeah. now when Rafa was manager. Yeah, yeah, Rafa Binning. I think it was 18 season, I think. Or it might have been 17, 18 that season when Rafa they, they dropped down. And yeah. I think he's got both, yeah. Yeah, see, Rafa, yeah. it all crazy. <laughs> <laughs> going from one striker to another, then. I mean, we're going back to Barnsley. Uh, Cosgrove started, a few question marks on that, but, I, you know, trusting what uh, Colin said after his bit, he thought it was well, one of them pictures, really, well, one of them what needed to be up. Fair play. Cosgrove got a goal. Uh, so can't question his tactics on that. Yeah. And maybe it was, you know, a thought in mind that it might be. Keeping McAtee a bit fresh, a bit fit for the guy and coming up against Derby. Could you see yeah. changes being made for like that? We've on about Pines, obviously. Could you see yeah, McAtee I'd, starting for Cosgrove? I'd, I'd <laughs> expect to see McAtee coming for Cosgrove, mate. Not not because I, you know, I think it's it, great to see Sam get his first that goal. Not his yeah. first goal, but his a, a first proper goal, shall we say? <laughs> <laughs> Go on, but see the other one. Go on, it would have great, had him, great move actually, because again, when when it happened, that's the weekend. Um, when he scored that, I said that is because Williams is right, right wing back. I'm not having to go yeah. O'Keefe or O'Cotter, but they wouldn't have seen that and they wouldn't have been in that position because that ball goes straight, straight across the area from Cadden from left, yeah. comes in across. Nobody's on it, but Williams has spotted it and he's used his pace. He's got right down to the byline and he's there to pick that to pick that mm -hmm. spare ball up. Um, and then he slotted it back to uh, to uh, Philip Tony and Phillips is it first time. What a yeah, great yeah. goal! Is it, is it Williams is it first time? Mm -hmm. Is it first time, and then Cosgrove's got a great head on. The keeper's got no chance. So, really pleased for Sam to get that goal because I, asked, I think people saying he's no good and stuff. I'm see, I don't see that. I see, I see a really good player in there, me, and I think he's a really versatile player. Um, 
He just needs to add goals. And I think once he gets one, he'll start getting a few. Yeah. So you got you got to, you know, to take you that off to um to Collins. Because when I saw it and saw McAtee weren't in team, I thought, hmm, is that is it is it is it because he's tired or what? But obviously it was yeah. a tactical thing, and it and can't argue with it, it paid off, didn't it? So yeah, yeah, fair play to Collins. Having said that, uh, against Derby, I think we'd be using McAtee's pace, I think would be if we're playing at home, I think using McAtee's pace against their defence would be. Um, a bit right, right, a bit right call. So hopefully that's that, that's what happens. Yeah, I was going to say like team lineups, but I think we more or less uh, agreed on that. You know, you're on about you're on about McAtee for Cosgrove. So apart from that, and I haven't heard about any injuries or like that. I can't see all else being changed. I don't think there's any need no. to be changed. You know, start thinking about the old. Uh, going to be going to score predictions on this one. This is going to be oh. a, a tricky one. This. Um, it's going to be tight, mate. I mean, mm, listen, yeah. we give we give we give him a bit of an hiding last year, four one. Um, mm. uh, we, we 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 played so so well that day, and I I I bite your arm, I bite your hand off if I can get that again. Oh, um, yeah. I, don't, I don't think that'll happen again. Um, I think that when we play as best, you know, as as, as we've proved against some uh, the, the bigger teams this year, we 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 can play some really good football and we can compete with anybody. Mm. Uh, you know, if we and if we took his chances away. We've we've got a really good chance of beating him. It's it's going to be really tight. So I'm not going to say anything ridiculous. Will we concede? Yeah, probably. Um, we don't seem to, to to you know get that get that clean sheet. I think the only clean sheet we've had in in Christ knows how many games is is the Oxford one, wasn't it? But um, and that will that will look that will look more than judgment. So. Uh, God, I've got to go for a Barnsley win. I, I mean, it could easily mm. it could easily be a draw if we're off his game. We could easily get beat by Derby. Obviously, yeah. they've got a really good team, um, but obviously, I, I want to see us win, and I, and I believe that we can win. So I'm going to say I'm going to go. I'm going to be bored and just say two one Barnsley. <laughs> <laughs> well, two one Barnsley. I was going to say the same two one. I think we've got goals to concede in us. Unfortunately, it'd be nice to string a you know. A few clean sheets together, and it's not through, you know, Roberts's fault. You know, Liam Roberts. I mean, he's saved us more times with some of saves. He's pulled off yeah. the uh, Fleetwood game, pulled off a great right save. That, that, that save from that header, yeah, unbelievable that save. Um, and yeah, I, I, you know, and I think Derby as well. With credit to Derby, they'll not be coming like what we've seen some teams come to Orwell to more or less. Not, I want to say part of a bus, but yeah, but make it awkward and 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 they pack it out. Like Build that, the Paul, one, yeah. Paul, if, you, if you look at how Paul Warren played at, at, at Rotherham, they don't his, ty- his teams don't play like that. No, and they I think that'll make like it a better footballing game, please and not I to see yeah. two sides. And, and, and the good thing about them, one of the good things about them, I've noticed about them as well, similar to us, they've had a lot of late wins of Derby, <clears> um, <throat> which means they've got a lot of belief in the team. It means they've got a lot of belief, and they'll push they'll push all the way to end. Um, so that's something obviously we're going to have to be really wary of. They're not they're not going to fade. They've had a lot of either late equalisers or or late winners, um, um, like ourselves. So it's yeah, it's going to it's going to be really exciting, man. It's going to be it's going to be tight. It's going to be tight. Mm-hmm. It's going to be nerve wracking. Mm-hmm. It's going to be a buzzing atmosphere. Um, yeah, can't wait. But I'm going to say to what I'm, like I say, I'm going to I'm going to be positive, mate. I'm be positive. Be positive. Yeah, I'm I'm saying two one as well. Uh, I just think you know. There's going to be goals in the game. I think both sides are going to be going playing football. Uh, there'll be no importance for it uh, for the each cause. Can't see Derby like you said under Paul Warner. They're not going to be uh, sitting like you just said. Be about the late equalizers and late winners we've got. It's just like us, we've been playing until final minute. Uh, yeah. Even more so when we're at home and uh, Phillips popped up at 95th minute, even down yeah. to 10 men. I just thought that we're not talking after the game about the officials. I'm hoping that the football on pitch yeah. does it. I'm hoping that the referee allows the football to play and flow because it's a big game for both sides and we don't want a referee to make a wrong or a bad decision and ruin the game, a football spectacle. Uh, yeah. which it, happened, it happened last season against uh, Bolton. Uh, oh, I think uh, Mads yeah, went off and that, that ruined the game. Um, I'm, yeah. I, I, like I said, I'm hoping that the, the football... Prevails on pitch, um, and like the fans enjoy every day from both sets as well. Because Derby fetching a great following, yeah. so I'm going two one. Um, 
So me and Ryan both going to bound two home wins. People watching back, let us know your thoughts. Good prediction. Team lineups. Uh, would you make any changes? McTee going in. I kind of think that'll be a, a yeah by vast majority. We'd be interested to know your thoughts. Uh, we've got score prediction as well. Ryan the beady attack as always, mate. It's been a pleasure talking. Uh, yes, well. Got some good debate and got some good thoughts going there. Um, not much, lot, much left to say. Um, just remember on the 64th minute, we're going to be, uh, you know, around with applause, show appreciation for Richard Atkinson. Uh, any Derby County fans, that'll be the reason why. Got a big game coming up. So much looking forward to it. Uh, yeah. Buzzing, cracking atmosphere at all. Well, let's pack it out. Let's make it red scarves and everything like that. Let's proper, proper get it, get it bouncing all well. Um, these are the game, kind of games we look forward to. And uh, one of them all being world championship. But, uh, <laughs> Yeah, go into the game. Let's let's bounce, make it rock. Let's make it bounce. Let's uh, be respectful on sixty fourth minute as well. Looking forward to it. So yeah, Ryan, thanks for joining me, mate. Uh, please like, subscribe, and share. One thing left to say: you Reds. <laughs>